Really, one of the most surprising things about Super Mario Bros. Wonder are its enemies, as this entry adds a whole bunch of new ones to face off against, some of which are very unique and bring some very interesting gameplay elements to the table. These foes do stick out when compared to others we've seen before in the series, giving me the idea to make videos on them, including today's, where I want to rank each one from most normal to the weirdest, going through exactly why they deserve a spot on this list. As a note, I'm only going to mention the enemies that are new to the franchise from this game, so if foes like the Goombrat or Ninji don't show up, it's because they've appeared in past titles. Oh yeah, before I get started, my name is Copycat, and if you haven't yet, then please subscribe to my channel, hitting that bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Starting things off with the enemy I feel like is the most normal in this entry is the Hoo-Hoo, which literally is just a normal owl that can be found within Fluff Puff Peaks, Pokepee Pass stage. This bird swoops down from his nesting place to try and attack you, but can be easily defeated by any normal means, or can just be avoided. This is one of the most normy bad guys you'll see ever in the Mario series, as very rarely does Nintendo put real-life animals in the mustachioed heroes games. One enemy that's been a staple of the series since its very beginning is the Lakitu, where here it comes in a slightly different form in the Lakitu Trio with three of them riding a single cloud in the Special World's Triple Threat Deluge stage. Not only do you have to dodge the spike balls they throw, but you also have to use those balls to clear certain bricks blocking your path, which I guess isn't that weird of a mechanic in the grand scheme of things. Next on the scale is a sentient object that can be found in a few of the lava levels called the Hot Hot Rocks, which looks so noble to me, I thought they had already appeared in a Mario game. What's cool about this enemy is that they periodically emit magma from its body that can damage you, but if it's sprayed by water in any way, it will completely cool them off and they can be platformed on. A foe that's a variant of a series regular is the fire-based spike, that throws balls of fire at you, which can be quite annoying. If there's anything weird about this one, is that it throws the balls incredibly fast, but either way, looks like something I'd sort of expect to see. An enemy that may seem more like a hazard than a living being is the Jump Toge, which essentially is just a bolt of energy that jumps at you from the bottom of the screen. This one's normal, just in that its function is very limited, and honestly I'm not even sure if it's alive, although it does have eyes. Next up is the Mecha Koopa Mach 2, which is the better, upgraded version of those Koopa-like robots, but here contain propellers that allow them to fly. This is definitely the superior version, and is normal-ish in my mind, but is at least an interesting reimagination of a familiar baddie. The armadillo-like armad enemy is up next, which is very similar in mechanics to the Koopas, but here curls up into a ball and rolls instead of sliding on the ground. They do look very normal, even if they are slightly unfamiliar to the Mario realm, as armadillos are usually found in the Donkey Kong games. One fish-like foe that I felt was pretty normal is the Anglefish, which has the ability to jump out of the water and try and deal you damage. Nothing else special here, other than it sort of looks like a triangle, which is odd, but it's not that odd. The Mara Mara is both familiar and unique, as it's basically a combination of a lava bubble and the Frog Guys from Super Mario Bros. 2, here periodically spitting fire towards the player's direction. These move around the entirety of the Magma Bog Palace, and aren't that weird, other than their face, I guess. Next is the Bulrush found throughout Pipe Rock Plateau, which is a bison crossed with a Triceratops that can get violently out of control. You can use these somewhat friendly foes to break bricks for you so you can collect goodies, even going as far as riding them during the Wonder Effect, which is just a great moment. Another enemy that fits in the somewhat familiar category is the Conk, which is pretty much a thwomp that's able to slide on the ground before launching its full weight at you. It can also travel through goo for what it's worth, and seems like it fits well in this universe. An enemy that's the exact opposite of the Anglefish are the Robbirds, who start outside of the water, then dives into it to try and damage you. These are pretty normal in terms of what we're going to see later in this video, but strange in the overall Mario franchise. Another bird-like foe that comes in here as just slightly weirder are the Condarts, who launch themselves towards you like darts, trying to damage you of course. Their beaks will get stuck in the wall for a very short period of time, which you then can use to your advantage and bonk off of. 
One enemy that scared the living heck out of me when I first came across it was the Smackerel, a giant fish that springs up from the sandy ocean floor to attack you. This foe is so powerful that it can actually break bricks, uncovering unreachable areas. But I'd say it's not very shocking or surprising to see, just a little jump scare at first. Next up, we have the Hakandoru, helpful bird enemy, who flies in a single direction while dropping items and coins on you. This one is definitely weird and has a weird little outfit to go with it. And from here on in this video, things will stay this way. This is definitely seen in the roller skating variant of the regular old Koopa, here called the Rolla Koopas, who skate around the levels you find them in, as well as occasionally jumping across gaps. I sort of wish you could have gotten your own roller skates and joined in on the fun, something Nintendo really dropped the ball on. The slime-like Wubba creatures are up next, which can maneuver on pretty much any surface, as well as inside of goo, something you have trouble moving in yourself. To make things even weirder, you can become this foe via the Wonder Effect, using its gravity-breaking abilities to your full advantage. One enemy that's weird, and is a variant of a staple foe, is the Shova, who is similar to the Sledge Bro, but here is equipped with gloves to move heavy objects. This involves blocks and pipes, and at times you need to move them yourself to kill this foe and uncover certain secrets. Another enemy that's like the Koopa in function are the snails, who can be removed from their shell and that can then be used as an item to flick at enemies or boxes. I guess the biggest difference is that these creatures can walk on walls and ceilings as well, which is kind of weird I guess. One enemy that can always be found in clusters are the sugar stars, who really are just star-like beings that act as obstacles, always moving in a set pattern. There are two versions of this weird thing, the green ones that move slow, and the purple ones that move very fast, both of which are pretty easy to dodge. One enemy that's always looked weird to me since the moment I saw it are the Snoodles, who are sorta of like a green version of the nerd's gummy clusters that bounce around angrily in the valley full of Snoodle stage. I just find their expression absolutely unnerving, and would go as far as saying I hate looking at their faces. One really cool foe that can be used as a very useful weapon are the Hanabihe, who are fireworks your character can hold, that explode upwards and deal damage to any enemy that's hit. This one is really fun to use, and unfortunately it only shows up in a few spots in the game. One enemy that's on the edge of being normal and weird is the Rumble, which is a large lava bubble that travels on a track, only found in the deep magma bog flying battleship. I don't really get why this one is confined in this way, and honestly it isn't super memorable. One of my favorite new additions to this entry are the Trotten Piranha Plants, who are mainly seen singing during a few of the game's Wonder Flower effects. I mean, these moments are just amazing. Just listen to the weirdness. Two enemies that fall under the same category are the Dark Mario and Dark Koopa, both of which are made of dark matter of course, and hurt the player on contact. These are similar to other bad guys we've seen in past entries like the Cosmic Clones, so this isn't crazy, but is still sort of strange. An enemy that's actually a female version of a Bullet Bill is the Missile Meg, who's much longer and thinner where you need to ride this foe as a moving platform in certain situations. Just to note, this is exactly halfway through the video, and this foe is pretty weird. So stay tuned for even weirder ones to come. The first on the really weird side of things is the Hoppy Cat, which is a green snail-like creature with spikes on its head that jumps the exact time you as the player jumps. These can be gotten around somewhat easily as they fall much slower back to the ground than you do. In a couple instances, you actually can become them, needing to use their insane jumping ability to get the Wonder Seed. An enemy I could have sworn I've seen in another game is the snake-like Subochan, who sometimes hides within pots that can be found near it, giving it an extra layer of protection. This for some reason just seems like it doesn't fit in the Mario universe, and if you know what game has a similar bad guy, then please let me know in the comments below. 
The next enemy is weird, as it springs up and extends its body to become much longer in the sproing, which looks a bit like an acorn in its small form, then sprouts to get big. This foe mainly shows up in places where the stage becomes shrouded in darkness, adding to the strange foe's mystique. Next is an enemy that actually seems like it belongs in the Yoshi Island game in the Melon Piranha Plant, which resides on its own little cloud and spits watermelon seeds out of its mouth. You can actually use those seeds as a way to platform upwards or across voids, which is super helpful in certain situations. Yoshi is usually the one shooting these seeds after he eats a watermelon, which I guess is just a nice homage to that. One enemy that's normal in terms of mechanics, but is weird in terms of appearance, is the Yorninoko, which is a turtle that looks a lot like a pig, found in most of the game's underwater levels. This just acts a lot like a Koopa, as it can be forced into its shell, then that shell can be used as an item to break blocks, which I don't really understand, as they didn't need to create a new foe for this, but whatever. One of the most unsettling enemies in the entire game is the Mama, which unhinges its huge jaws to try and eat anything in its way. Now, I mean literally anything, as it will even eat other enemies that it comes in contact with, meaning it's sort of a cannibal, which is really odd. Next up are the Noshers, which also eat anything in their path, but here travel in hordes, meaning you need to run away from the swarm or risk being chomped. These look a lot like the regular chomp foes, but with seriously messed up teeth, and can also fly, adding to the weirdness. An enemy I can safely label as the weirdest bird-like foe in the entire game are the Bluebirds, that usually stand stationary and shoot their beaks towards the player that if impaled into a wall, then acts as a platform. Even weirder is what happens during the Wonder Flower effect, as these birds start shooting out bubbles instead, which you then need to use the platform upwards or across gaps. A foe that's like a magma version of the Thwomp is the Rarg, although it has two huge differences in that it's a Blarg instead of a stone, and that it instantly dies when it comes in contact with the surface. I'm really not sure why it would self-destruct like this, which is why it comes in as pretty weird on this list. Next up is the King Oyster Mushroom looking foes that are called Aarons in the game files, which greatly vary in height and somewhat resemble bitty buds that we've seen in past entries. When you kill one of these, it will interact with anything else that's behind it, whether that be other enemies or goodies that you can actually collect through it. One enemy that's both weird in name and function are the Outma Ways which look like snow ready Goombas who kick things out of their way. This is usually either projectiles you send towards them, or ice blocks, that can be used to platform on in some instances, but it's still very strange. An enemy that's become an instant classic from this title is the Hoppo, which is an inflated spherical hippo that bounces around and can be bounced off of. These are very weird, but very useful and just leaves me wondering how they inflated in the first place. I think it's pretty obvious to see why the Mumsies are one of the game's strangest enemies, not just because it's a mummy, but also because of the method in which it's defeated. Now, mummies have appeared before in Mario games, it's just that you need to unravel this specific version to beat it. Otherwise, it's indestructible, as I guess it is dead. This mechanic of having to grab something specific on an enemy is definitely new to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Something we'll see later with another foe in this video. Next, I want to look at the Take Bow or Attack Bow, which are individual pieces of sentient bamboo that can stack together to create a tall obstacle. These individual pieces can also be picked up and used as objects that can be thrown around, sometimes appearing in different colors or textures or electrified. But either way, they're definitely weird. Next, we're going to move on to what I consider to be the really, really weird enemies. Starting things off with the Moving Doors, who at first appear to just be regular old doors, but when you come near, they spring to life trying to take a bite out of you. What's even weirder is the way they're defeated, which is by bonking off their heads, then by entering into them, which neutralizes them and gives you a coin. The Smorgans are an extremely weird obstacle foe who resemble evil clouds that don't really do anything but get in your way. There's two versions here, the smaller ones that move back and forth, and the bigger, immobile ones that sort of just sit there looking evil. One foe that literally acts like a balloon are the Blooms, 
who get inflated to their maximum size, then go shooting off in a specific direction. These weird inflatable fish air base things can be bonked off to reach higher up areas, possessing a goofy expression that just makes me giggle. Up next is the somewhat helpful, somewhat annoying taily enemies, who can be used to swing on like vines, but can also attack you using their spike balls. I sort of wish this one was used a bit more in this game as a method to platform, as here it seems sort of gimmicky, and the way that the spike balls come out and hit you periodically is sort of tiresome. Again, I feel like this should be in a Donkey Kong game over a Mario experience, but I guess nowadays there's more crossover than there ever has been before. One incredibly bizarre enemy that's present in the Knucklefest Bowser's Blazing Beat stage is called the Dragon's Bullseye, who is sort of a bullet bill made of different segments that chases the player around. I think it's the fact that this one has arms and fists, looking like it wants to punch you that puts it so high in this video, even if it really just wants to ram you with its head. Up next is one of the most awesomely weird enemies in the entire game in the Morocon, which starts off as a sentient piece of corn, but if it's heated up, it turns into popcorn. In that delicious state, it begins jumping around crazily trying to damage you, which is just hysterical and really well thought out for a relatively simple Mario title. Probably the goofiest foe you'll see in Super Mario Bros. Wonder is the Chin Anago, which sort of acts like a piranha plant, but is a sea cucumber with a very friendly face. This one doesn't attack you, and it's just covered in spikes acting more like an obstacle, but it definitely is weird, scoring very high on the scale. One enemy that looks like a morbid cross between a chain chomp, a dry bones, and a motorcycle are the Revers, which has a handle that can be pulled back then released to send them launching in a direction. This is a good way to either kill enemies or interact with blocks to trigger or break them, having that similar grab mechanic that we've seen from the Mumsies. We now come to the final five absolute weirdest enemies from this title where in the 5th spot we have the Rumbas, who at first just look like they're rolling angry rocks, but you'll quickly see there's more that meets the eye. That's because the rock is actually a shell, and inside is sort of a bumblebee-like bug that needs to be defeated with the bonk. I'm not sure who at Nintendo thought putting a bug in a rock made sense, but honestly I think they were actually onto something. Coming in in the 4th weirdest spot is the seeking version of the bullet bill which follows the player around the stage, but unlike the bullseye bill, it doesn't fly, instead attaching itself to walls. Its crazy looking face and frantic looking arms are what makes it so funky to face off against, and I really can't say there's another enemy like it in this game. Coming in at number 3 is a foe that only shows up during the final Bowser boss battle in the fiery note piranha plants, being released by the big boss as an obstacle you have to jump over. These come in their small, easy to dodge forms, and their much larger, hard to dodge form, needing to use the beat bouncers to get over them as you'll surely take damage otherwise. Obviously these are supposed to be music notes, fitting perfectly with the music themes of this game, but they are very different and definitely need to be showcased. The second last enemy we're going to look at in this video, with a weirdness score of 9.6 out of 10, is the Slide On who's a thwomp-like creature that slides on the floor whenever the stage moves, needing in some instances to ride on top of them to find secrets. Why this one deserves to be so high in this video all has to do with it being seen sucking on a pacifier, which is just a creepy sight to me, although I could really just be overreacting, I don't know, let me know in the comments. Now, taking the top spot in this video as my choice for the weirdest enemy in Super Mario Bros. Wonder is the Skedaddler, who are squirrel foes that scurry away when you get near. However, at one point they decide they're tired of running and start to stand their ground, and begin firing acorn projectiles at you. These can either hit you and deal damage, or it can be bonked off of as a way to reach higher up platforms, and even in one instance, be used for the infinite 1-up exploit. It's the combination of their strange abilities and terrifying face which grabs them the top seat with a score of 97 out of 100, something I think most people would agree with. Alright, that's gonna be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you agreed or disagreed with this, please let me know in the comments, please like this video, 
and of course subscribe to my channel. Also, I'd like it if you go follow my Instagram at copycatgamer. There I upload some cool clips and items from my collection that you won't see anywhere else. Hope you guys all have a good day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!